Ethereum, which is in uh, a new cryptocurrency, not even really a currency, but a new crypto platform uh, that was created by Vitalik Buterin. Probably butchered his name right there. But, uh, you know, him and his team have created Ethereum, which is a new decentralized platform for creating contracts uh, on a Turing complete blockchain. And uh, it recently concluded the Genesis sale of the first, like, the first amount of Ether, which is their uh, unit of, of transacting on the network. They completed the sale a few days ago and they raised over $15 million just in Bitcoin in exchange for like, I think they started out with 3,000 Ether for one Bitcoin at the beginning of the fundraising. And then slowly, like every couple of weeks or so after that, they lowered the amount of Ether that you would get for one Bitcoin. But now it's concluded about, it's, it lasted a little over a month, and they made $15 million raising money for Ethereum, which uh, there, there was a submission on the Bitcoin subreddit that links to a Wikipedia article, and the Wikipedia article said that Ethereum, based on that $15 million, is now the most crowdfunded uh, project or the second most actually behind like some gaming platform second most crowdfunding project in the history of ever like uh 15 million dollars for this and yeah interesting news what do you what do you think i think it's uh it might be one of the you know first successful altcoin ipos you know um altcoins who do who have IPOs in the past have gotten the reputation of you know being scams or pump and dump schemes. Mm -hmm. You know, so far that that's not the case with Ethereum. You know, people are people are actually excited about it, and it seems like they're doing you know pretty interesting things with it. So um, it's I mean, fifteen million dollars is a lot of money, especially considering yeah. that that it's you know some cryptocurrency thing. Yeah, and when you put it in perspective, like Bitcoin companies, there was a lot of hype when Bitcoin companies would make like 10 or 12 million dollars in venture funding, but now like a competing crypto platform has raised 15 million dollars in I wouldn't even classify it as as venture funding. Like the mm -hmm. the people who funded this aren't really expecting to make a profit. If they are, they're probably going to be mistaken. But the, they basically you know, gave this money to the Ethereum developers saying, here, take this, um, use it to, 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 you know, feed yourselves and support yourselves while you're developing this great platform. And in exchange, I'll get 3,000 Ether, which might or might not be worth that same amount when they actually uh, open up the entire platform to the public. But, like, they get something in return, you know, they can do, they'll be able to do something with that Ether when the platform is released. And maybe even create like their own their own you know platforms on top of Ethereum. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. It's really crazy. And like I, I encourage our listeners to have an open mind, and do some research on the potential of Ethereum. We've done videos in the past ab ab about about this as well, about how you can create you know you can create your own currencies on top of Ethereum. You can create your own like markets and and laws and contracts. Basically, like any any type of agreement or ledger that can be created by humans can be executed on the Ethereum blockchain. At least that's what that's the idea. That's what they're promising. And I, you know, fifteen million dollars. I guess I can understand it. It's it's pretty popular. And like they 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 didn't they don't have a pre mine or anything. Or they're gonna have a pre mine, but the pre mine of of Ether is determined by the amount of people that funded it in the first place. They didn't decide how much Ether there's going to be beforehand. They decide now, now that they know how much funding they got, and I don't know the exact amount, but, you know, 3,000 times however many people donated, and that's what's that's what's going to be on the Ethereum blockchain. Yeah, I think they're really smart about doing that, too, because, uh, um, you know, like you said, at the very beginning, you could get a bunch for one Bitcoin, but then as uh, the IPO was starting to wind down, they, you know, contracted the supply available. You know, so essentially, uh, they engineered like a deflationary IPO because you know they they kept the price 
or I'm assuming they kept the price of one Bitcoin or whatever it was, the but then yeah. just offered less coins for it. So, um, you know, they basically engineered a deflationary IPO where, um, they, like, the, yeah, I call it a currency because it's, well, I don't think that's what it's going to end up being, but, um, you know, I'm not an Ethereum expert, but they, you know, they, they made it to where the ethers, they, um, just like ended up going up in value towards the end of the IPO. You know, most pre-mines are like, okay, we're going to pre-mine like a million of them. And then people buy like a hundred thousand of them. And then you have, you know, this huge inflation because you're just, you know, there's the majority still all of those people. coins in existence. Yeah. Just because they aren't in the yeah, public like the on the market yet doesn't mean that they aren't going to in the future and inflate the overall supply. Yeah, it's like uh, like the majority of the of the supply people don't even want. So you have to you know basically give them away for free. But that didn't happen with Ethereum. You know they're really smart in doing that, and yeah. um, I definitely think it's interesting. I think it could, uh, you know, like this this like teamed up with Open Bazaar combined with Bitcoin. Like it's just this whole like digital you know business ecosystem that can emerge from it. And it's like, it's like, we're, we're like we're officially in the twenty first century. Like this, like this is the future. Yeah. Uh, like I'm, I'm not saying like Ethereum is the future. I'm not like trying to you know like pump it, like trying to be a shill for them or anything. I'm just saying like, the technology, uh, like surrounding these these projects. Like, you know, this is crazy. Like, yeah. And it's it's all it's all decentralized too. For the most part, yeah, and, this could um, be like this could be the defining in invention of the 21st century. Like I used to think that about Bitcoin. Like this, this is the defining invention of the 21st century. This is the one world currency that everyone will be able to transact with, assuming they have like the technological tools to to execute transactions on the blockchain. But yeah, now that we have all these other, <clears throat> excuse me. Now that we have all these other crypto platforms out, including Ethereum, those could be the future now. Like, who knows? It could be any of these crypto platforms. And, uh, like, if you can execute any any contract on a blockchain de in a decentralized way, like, that puts lawyers out of business, uh, you know, like, it, 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 it puts, like, so many people out of business who whose services aren't necessarily efficient or, you know, good for the market anymore and basically it, it it could free up those people to do different things with their time that are more productive in the new 21st century economy so i mean it's it's we don't even know like how this is going to truly impact society i'm just talking about like the the very vague possibilities but like the fact that these possibilities even exist now is pretty amazing you know me and you were talking about this the other day um about like you you could start a business or some kind of organization uh right now with this technology and have um have no physical like physical office location um everything could be entirely done over the internet all the meetings and things could be done on Skype or Google Hangouts um the yeah. mission the mission statement the budget uh and uh you know the general like basic structure I, I call like I called it a constitution but articles of incorporation that's what it is when you start it when you start a corporation um, it could all be done through like uh, you know it, it in the past like the recent past it was Ricardian contracts but now it's like you know it could be ethereum smart contracts which is based on Ricardian contracts and um, like all the funds could be controlled through multi-sig mm -hmm. uh, so you know it's you can't have one person just like going, you know, crazy with power. And, um, but it's just, since it's all digital, like expenses would be so low that, you know, your overhead would be virtually non-existent and you could, you know, you could allocate 90 to 95% of your resources to actually, you know, like selling the thing or providing the service that you yeah, want or improving it, yeah. innovating on top of it. Yeah. And it would just like, it would just create, you know, this, like this super innovative, like super affordable, highly profitable, um, you know, new like species of business. Yeah. And like, 
it's that's just, an interesting way to put it. It's new species that's yeah, more efficient. Like, Natural selection, right there. Like it's just, it's just insane the possibilities. You know, we've been in the 21st century. It's 14 years in the 21st century, and um, like I We're think we've made started. More, yeah, I think we've made more progress in these 14 years than like the entire 20th century made. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Like you, you think of the, you think of the, like the major technological innovations of the 20th century, like you know, democracy, electricity, cars, you, you know, all those telephone, become, TV. Like, yeah, like even even now internet, we have all of that combined on smartphones, you know, basically. Yeah, you like even internet is kind of becoming outdated in a way because you have these people who have these like visions of a decentralized internet. Because, yep. you know, um, Internet right now is centralized at the point of access, which is why we've been having problems, you know, with, like, all these ISPs, like, you know, Comcast and Windstream Trying and all those. Trying to throttle people. Um, and, and, like, in, four, in 14 years, um, we've basically, you know, built the basic foundation, and now we're starting to develop it, and it's going to, like, render 100 years' worth of technology obsolete. <laughs> And like we we've done that in 14 years, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, and the people who got rich off that original technology or innovations won't necessarily be happy now that they're becoming obsolete. They're probably just yeah. gonna ignore these new platforms for as long as possible until they go the way of the dinosaur. Yes, and like we're gonna like you're gonna get because of that, we're gonna get a lot of resistance from governments and things like that who are you know catering to the special interest. Yeah. You know the people like the old like the old money. You know they're not gonna go willingly. They're gonna they're gonna do whatever they can to keep the old, like the old systems intact. But yeah, you know it's not gonna be easy to do that. 